welcome live inside the historic Hobart Arena along the banks of the Great Miami River in downtown Troy, Ohio. One of the great hockey barns in existence will play host to the Ohio High School Athletic Association Division I Varsity Ice Hockey. Preseason matchup between the Toledo Whitmer Panthers and your Troy Trojans. Hello, everybody, and welcome alongside the rink. I'm JT Zabo. Tonight is the final preseason tune-up for the Trojans. They are 2-0-0 so far in the exhibition tilts. Most importantly, the first part of this home-and-home -home series against the Whitmer Panthers. That coming last weekend at the Team Toledo Ice House. And, of course, that was a Trojan victory 5-4 thanks to sophomore. Gabby Paff, who gets the start tonight. And so the Trojans in their home white uniforms from rival hockey in the scarlet and gray piping. We'll start this hockey game skating from right to left on your screen as we welcome you to Facebook.com slash Troy Hockey as part of the Troy Trojans Hockey Network presented by Team Gear, the official spirit wear of Troy Trojans Hockey. Again, if you're just joining us, getting set to begin first period action from Hobart Arena in downtown Troy. The final preseason matchup for the Trojans. As the crowd continues to filter into this building, we are underway as the captain, Mike McGurk, will win the draw and clear it out on the near side boards. Right out inside the Whitmer zone. Starting netminder tonight for Toledo Whitmer, number 29, Lucian Rose gets the tilt between the pipes as the Whitmer Panthers in their maize and blue uniforms, reminiscent of a certain team up north that this Ohio State Buckeye will not mention tonight as they'll play it out through center ice, out through the red stripe, controlled by Whitmer. Back inside their zone, misstep there. Will be picked back up down low by Derek Bradley, who tries to clear out of his own zone. Finally does, scoops it up, open ice and across Trojan territory. Three wide as that shot wider than that. Back to Brady Smith for the Trojans, who fires it back around the Dashers. Now on the right wing side, and out comes Cameron Lombardo across the red stripe. Let's that one fly. Wide left of the net as it's played out from behind the trapezoid. Right back to Burkhardt, a shot from the point. Loose puck out in front. And so he'll hold on now to stop the clock with 13.51 to go. A good Sunday afternoon crowd on hand here inside the historic Hobart Arena for this final preseason exhibition game for the Trojans as part of their 25th anniversary season all season long. We'll talk about some changes to the schedule that came out this week. Here in a little bit as the puck comes back out to center ice. Back to play does McGurk out of his own zone. Missteps the puck but is able to sweep it across before the Panthers move that one back into the far side. Playing it back into the corner was Fielding. Held on at the point momentarily at the line was Relford as he's able to send it back down low. For McGurk out of the corner and around the boards. Half boards on the right wing side but not out. Drive is that one wide right off the end boards. Scoop back up. By the Trojans on the half wall. Crawford up the wing for Ian Francis. Plays it again, trying to get a piece of it. Francis not, excuse me. Playing it ahead out inside Whitmer territory. They'll play it out from their own corner. Rink wide pass. Nobody is there. No call on that potential interference. And so the Trojans getting away with one early. 12.43 to go in counting here in this opening period. Still scoreless. As Garrity plays it across the line, works it deep inside Whitmer territory behind Lucian Rose, the starting netminder, but this one's going to be waved off from the icing as Burkhardt had traffic behind him, gets it out to center ice. One touched ahead by Garrity all the way back inside the Whitmer zone, and this is starting out to be a, just a continuation of what we saw last weekend in Toledo, just an end-to-end -end battle as that one side of the cage knocked aside by Rose. Played back into the corner by the Trojans. Works it up to the point, but he couldn't hold on at the line as Berghardt forced to chase that one all the way back down inside his zone. Wrapped it around for 
Crawford now up the wing for Lombardo. Kicked it wide on the red line. Back retreating inside Whitmer zone. That'll give the Trojans a chance to change lines as they'll play that one out ahead. Picked up, back on side. Here's a shot. Francis not directed away by Rose out from behind the net in the trapezoid and around the Dashards. Takes a funny bounce off the kick plate, but here come the Panthers. Now three wide across the line. Left wing side, top of the circle. Stood up by Berghardt as that's played out back into the corner. Wrapped around the Dashers below the circle. Outlet pass in through the slot. Nobody was there, but finally picked up by Lombardo. Tries that outlet pass and ahead to Brady Smith. Icing is signaled and icing the call. And that'll stop the clock now with 11.16 to go here in this first period. Still scoreless on the scoreboard where it counts. And so the faceoff comes back inside the Trojans' end. And that one controlled and hit off the referee, Eric Schreiner, before it's picked back up. And he will hold on to that one for a whistle now. To stop the clock well with 11-11 to go in this scoreless first period. Be sure to make a wish on that time as the Trojans electing to put out some fresh legs out onto the ice surface. As this one won by the Panthers but cleared all the way out into neutral ice as they'll regroup at their own line. Stretch pass ahead and a big open ice hit on Chavon. Knocked him into next week as play continues inside the Trojan zone. Back now on the half boards. Rink wide pass. Intercepted by Relford. He'll chase it back inside his zone before wrapping it back down. Picked up by the Trojans. Moving it back up the Nashers. That was Ian Francis not. Couldn't contain this one. Forced back inside the Trojan zone as that one's going to be stopped up. And an icing call. Now with 10.38 to go here in this scoreless first period from the historic Hobart Arena. Opened in 1950 for the IHL's Troy Bruins, the top farm team for then the Boston Bruins at the time of the old International Hockey League. Hosted them until the 1959 season when they relocated out east, I believe, to Utica. Did not see professional hockey until the return of the Sabres in 1982. And that is what brought... Head coach Rick Sabo to town as a member of the Troy Sabres winning the Walmer Cup as part of the All-American Hockey League against the Carolina Thunderbirds. At that time, coached by no one else but John Tortorella. A lot of history in this building right here as play continues back down low. Trojans celebrating their 25th season inside this historic hockey barn. As they'll pick up the puck, top of the circle, drops it back down low, give and go, shoots! Off the end boards, he shoots and scores! And that was just a greasy, hard-working, old-fashioned goal. As we talked about before, this building was built on that lunch pail blue collar style of hockey, and that's exactly the kind of goal we saw. And so it's a early one nothing lead for the Trojans as we approach the 10-minute mark here of this first period. We'll go downstairs for the official word from public address announcer Roger Mumpower momentarily, but this one picked back up by Jack Crawford. Rank wide off the end boards. Quinn Garrity getting credit for the goal. As here come the Panthers backhander cleared away out in front. Rebound top of the circle. Lombardo getting credit for an assist as is Brady Smith on Garrity's goal. His first of the night. Laid all the way down, no icing called, as that'll make it all the way down inside the Whitmer zone. One touch out to center, across the red stripe, two wide. Two on one the other way, Panthers couldn't get that one going, and so they'll reset. Top of the circle, top of the point, just below the logo, here's a snapshot, saved by Carver, as the goaltender made the save off the end boards. Now here they come the other way, Trojans. 
Out to center, just dumping it in at the tail end of a change was Gavin Burris. And he'll move that one all the way back down. Still inside Whitmer territory. Here come the Panthers. Dangling through, Cooper Sexton losing his stick on the play as Wisniewicz had a piece of it, as did Welford as he's hit off the puck, and we're going to get a penalty on the... I believe the penalty is going to go against the Trojans. And indeed it is. Looks like it's going to be Brady Smith in the penalty box. Eight minutes and 46 seconds in this one nothing hockey game. As a little miscommunication there. As that one's going to be stopped right up by Noah Carver. And the sophomore elect still hold on. Stopping the clock now with 8 minutes and 42 seconds to go. A kneeing penalty to the freshman. Brady Smith. Kneeing is the call as you hear public address announcer Roger Mumpower make that call. Face off will send it all the way down free of charge. And so that'll be right back out to the Whitmer. Offensive breakout, stretch pass. Nearly intercepted through center ice, but going back to play it is Berghart. Chips it off the wall in front of the benches. Gets that one back down with Lombardo giving chase. Playing it again on the far wing side. Here's the outlet. Breakout intercepted. That time by Burris. He'll work it back out. Good offensive pressure here on this penalty kill brought to you by Clope, America's favorite garage door. The official penalty kill sponsor of your Troy Trojans. Wholesale changes now for the Trojans as they hem it deep inside the Whitmer zone. Here's the outlet pass this time intended for Gignac. He'll get it out to center ice and skate with it. In on side three wide. Gignac still back into the corner. Couldn't contain the puck. Drops it back, but it's stripped away by Francis Knott on the half board's right wing side. He'll hold on to it before he sends it back to the top of the circle. Rebound. Blocker save made by Noah Carver. And the Trojans able to clear the length of the ice with 43 seconds in counting on that kneeing penalty to Brady Smith. Here's a head of steam across the red stripe and dumping it inside the Trojan zone. Berghardt will go back to play it. Out on the far side half boards. Intercepted by McGurk. Couldn't clear. Held on at the point this time. As Bradley fires it back in for the Panthers. Wrapped around. Bradley holds it in at the line again on the far side of the ice. Before it's right back out from behind the net. In the trapezoid. And now works its way up the dashers to the half boards. Where that's picked up by Garrity. One goal already tonight. Sends that one all the way down at the tail end of this penalty kill. Four seconds in counting on Brady Smith's penalty is now too wide across the line of the Panthers. Trojans return to full strength at the line and held on. Smith out from the box. Playing it on the near side boards. That's intercepted by Gavin Burris. He'll hold on to it. Risky pass out through the slot. Finally makes its way out to center ice before it's picked up by the Trojans. Fired deep inside the zone. They'll get a final change. Both clubs getting changes now. As under pressure from Smith, the Panthers force that one all the way down inside the Trojans' territory. And with a little bit of time, that'll be Burkhart to send it all the way down. And so that'll stop the clock now with six minutes and eight seconds to go in this first period. Trojans almost looking a little discombobulated at the tail end of that penalty kill. Not quite sure. What was clicking, getting some last-minute reminders from head coach Rick Zabo down at the bench as a fresh set of legs out on the ice. Gabby Paff, who scored the game winner against this Whitmer Panthers hockey club last week, will take the faceoff on the stick side and will win it back. Picked up by Garrity before it's fired right back in. Crawford misplays it off the... Side of his stick, holds on to it, looks to send it off. The dashers nearly picked off on the half boards. Back for Garrity. He's able to clear it all the way down. 
And so this one's going to be signaled all the way down with no icing called. Picked up by the Panthers on this breakout attempt. Right wing and up the Dashers. Icing signaled. And icing is the call. And so with five minutes and 39 seconds to go here in this first period. They'll bring the face off all the way back inside the Whitmer zone. And that one won back by the Trojans. Here's Berghardt a shot. Loose puck out in front. Smith a shot. Backhander went just wide through the blue paint. That is that one. Errant pass. Makes it out to neutral ice, and the Trojans will regroup just in front of their own red stripe. For those watching, maybe thinking those blue lines are a little close on your screen, it is true. Neutral zone here in Troy is 15 feet short. And so a lot of hockey clubs coming into this building not quite used to that particular setup. A bit of a home ice advantage for the Trojans. They use perfectly on that instance as they'll wrap it around the Dashers now to the right wing side for Ian Francis. Now one touch pass. Cooper Sexton across the line. Top of the circle. Drops it back for Brady Smith. The drive! As that one was saved by Rose. Loose puck in in front. And he held on to it. And that'll stop the clock now with 4.49 to go. Whew, that was a close one there. As you can see, Sexton was trying to eye that corner, got the shot and the save after he dropped it back. And a good effort there by the freshman line for the Trojans. And so the Trojans will play that around the Dashers on the right wing side. Played up the wing. Right back for McGurk. The captain sends it back into the corner. As they'll hit it against the Dashers' right wing side. And it's picked back up by the Panthers the other way. Here's Cole Allen. Couldn't hold on to it. Right back for Eric Kenny as he'll fire it out from behind the goaltender. And so it looks like there's going to be A penalty against the Trojans on that play. And indeed, it's Jack Crawford going into the penalty box. And so Crawford in the box on an interference call with four minutes and 13 seconds to go. And that one's going to be way out of play. They're going to say that one was not deflected up into the protective mesh. And so the faceoff right back in the neutral zone. That one won back inside the... Visitors end before they'll fire that ahead. Whitmer on the line. Couldn't control. And the Trojans will regroup momentarily. Right back for Cameron Lombardo, but had his pocket picked as it's scooped up by Gignac. He'll hold on to it. Gets a bit of speed across the line in onside. Far side circle. There's a shot scored! And that puck seemed to have eyeballs. A power play goal with 3.44 to go in this first period ties this hockey game at one apiece. As it looks like Gignac will get credit for that goal, you could see the play developing out through center ice. And so we're right back to even tilts. End-to-end -end hockey game if you're just joining us or watching this on demand on Facebook or YouTube. As that one picked up by the Trojans. Gignac getting credit for the goal, his first of the night. An unassisted goal as Gignac is going to get credit for the lone point tonight. 1-1 hockey game here as we enter the closing moments of the 
First period, three minutes and change to go across the Trojans' line, left wing side. Centering pass, knocked aside and played by Carver. And that'll stop the clock now with three minutes and three seconds to go. And the faceoff will remain inside the Trojans' end. And controlled by the Trojans as McGurk holds onto it for three minutes even and wraps it around the high glass. Digs it in off a stanchion and is picked up by Burris, who makes the play but takes the hit all the way down. No icing called. Even strength hockey as the puck squirts out front before it's knocked away and by the Panthers. Outlet pass picked up by McGurk at center ice and he'll step across in on side, top of the right wing circle. Intercepted and can't be held on by Lombardo at the point, forcing Miles Schumann to go back and play it as Schumann tried to play it up the wing. Little help from the captain, Mike McGurk, fires it all the way down finally as the Trojans complete their wholesale change. Two minutes and 15 seconds to go with a head of steam. Here come the Panthers the other way, a shot. Hit off a shin pad out in front. Pick back up by Cooper Sexton, wearing his big brother Connor's number this year. Connor was a senior last year and graduated with number four. Little brother kind of wanted his own number, but mom and dad already had all the number four swag. So tough luck, kiddo, as play continues. Trojans are going to get called with one here. And that's going to be a tripping call against the Trojans with 1.43 to go. And the parade of freshmen into the penalty box for the Trojans continues as right back is number eight, Brady Smith, in the box for tripping. Again with 1.43 to go here in this first period. Trojans right back on the Clopay penalty kill brought to you by Clopay. The official garage door manufacturer of Troy Trojans Athletics. As they'll work it up the Dashers on the right wing side. Played by the Panthers out to center ice. Scooped up by McGurk. He'll hold on. Carries it in before he has his pocket picked top of the circle. Forced back in before this one's sent ahead. Smith in the box again. His second penalty of the night will make its way all the way down to the Trojans end. And... That'll bring the face off all the way back inside the Toledo Whitmer zone with a 111 left on the big boards here at Hobart Arena for some Sunday night hockey presented by Team Gear. It'll be Gavin Burris in to take the face off on the stick side of goaltender Lucian Rose. And they'll win it back into the right wing corner. Bouncing puck. Kicked away by Berghardt. Sends it ahead now for Lombardo. He'll send it around the Dashers. Out from behind the net. Under a minute now to go here in this opening period. 1-1 hockey game between two very good hockey clubs tonight in a preseason finale for the Trojans. The games and the points start counting next week. As the Trojans... Try to meander out of their own zone and finally do. Gavin Burris has his wallet stolen. Is this one right back to the Panthers? That shot, impossible angle knocked away. Loose puck, Noah Carver the save. Rebound, held on to in the right wing corner. 20 seconds and counting as the bodies go flying in the right wing corner before it's picked back up. Loose puck in front, delayed penalty coming. And just like that, it's going to be a cross-checking penalty against the Trojans. Sophomore Colin Berghardt into the box, two minutes for cross-checking, with 12.4 seconds to go here in this opening period. And that really opens up an opportunity for the Panthers here in the closing seconds of this first period to finish the first stanza with a bit of an advantage. Now a five-on-three face-off inside the Trojans' end. 
Burris will win it cleanly back to the captain, Mike McGurk, who is going to do everything he can to kill as much of that time. Five seconds and counting, and he's getting worked over hard into the corner, but an excellent penalty kill as time expires. An excellent job by the captain to take an absolute beating. And that one was an excellent opportunity by the Trojans. Good work there. And so after one period of hockey, an exciting end-to-end -end first period if you're just joining us, a one-to-one -one hockey game after 15 minutes of play from the historic Hobart Arena. Again, it was a Trojans victory in game one of this home and home series with the Toledo Whitmer Panthers. The Trojans ended up scoring the game winner. It was sophomore Gabby Paff, the game winner in the third period to secure the first win for the Trojans and remain 2-0 and oh for the preseason. Trojans trying to end their preseason tilt. A perfect 3-0. and oh. And we still have two periods of play to do so. I'd like to thank our sponsors on the Troy Trojans Hockey Network, presented by Team Gear. I'd like to thank Kev See-Through Window Cleaning, Irwin Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, the Comprehensive Dentistry of Troy. Also I'd like to thank RMT Rosewood Machine and Tool, Leitner and Stickle CPA, Harlow Builders. Troy Speech Therapy Association, Bruns General Contracting, Dungan and Lefevre, a legal professional association, Excellence in Dentistry, Minster Bank, Clopay, First Title, AccuTool, and ConAgra, the makers of Slim Jim, right here in Troy. Oh, yeah! And so as we get set to begin... Second period action from the historic Hobart Arena in Troy. Glad to have you along for the ride here. I'm JT Zabo. An excellent first period as we're underway for period number two. This one brought down and held on. Loose puck as the Trojans return a man to the ice. Brady Smith back inside the zone. As this one. Shot wide off the high glass. Wide left, 120 to go. On the remaining penalty to Colin Berghardt from the tail end is a good back check there by the Panthers, nearly allowing Brady Smith to get a piece of it, but back checking the other way, hit his own guy as the puck is going to come right out of play. And that one, a souvenir proc brought to you by Team Gear. A crushing hit along the half boards by Brady Smith on the back check. I think assistant coach Preston Howes may have to remind him that those skates do, in fact, have breaks on them as that shot turned aside by Noah Carver. Under a minute now to go on the power play to the Panthers. There's a shot right on. Held on to... By Carver to stop the clock now. Fourteen oh one to go here in this second period. Forty eight seconds remaining on the penalty to Colin Berghardt. And the face off controlled by the Trojans as they bring that out to center ice. Whitmer out to Neutral territory as they play Pong through center. Right back inside their own zone. Left wing centering pass. Going to hold on to it. Thought maybe better because of it as he crosses the red stripe and dumps it in just behind Noah Carver. Out of the trapezoid and around the dashers on the far wing. Up the wall. Held on at the point. Under pressure from Gavin Burris. Brought it back in. Loose puck wide. From that shot from Gignac, he's already got one goal already tonight. Played back on the wing, scooped up by Relford, a shot wide. Loose puck out from behind the net. 
Knocked away off that backhander side of the cage. Goaltender has it, and he will hold on. With 13.07 to go. And the faceoff will remain inside the Trojan zone. Gabby Paff in to take the faceoff on the glove side of Noah Carver. As Ian Francis not tried to center that away for Paff, couldn't get it in time. Trojans will pump that back in and tag up at the line as they continue their charge. Down low, blowing a tire as Paff tries a centering feed. That one off the short glass before she gets hit off the puck. And here comes Whitmer back the other way. Too wide across neutral ice. They'll fire it deep inside Trojan territory and around the Dashers as we return to full strength hockey. 12-34 and counting here in this middle period. 1-1 on the scoreboards where it counts. As the Trojans scoring first off a Quinn Garrity goal before... Jake Gignac equalized it at one there in the tail end of the first period. Trojans can't contain before they finally do. Picked back up by Sexton. He pays for it against the Dashers as Sexton tries to swipe that one away. Francis Knott picks it up on the far side boards. Centering feed. Paff couldn't hold on to it. Back to get it is Miles Schumann who holds it in at the line on the left wing side and drops it back. Out from behind, Francis Knott to Gabby Paff on the half boards. Makes its way back to the point for a drive. Loose puck came out in front. Goaltender didn't see it. And the hockey gun smiling on goaltender Lucian Rose after that one. As the Trojans play it out from behind the net. Still under pressure back at the point. Berghardt, a drive, loose puck off the side of the cage. Back to help out is Garrity, hit off the post. Rebound back to Berghardt again off the high glass. A shooting gallery ensues as play continues on the half boards. Whittier trying to clear. Whitmer cannot clear as that one tripped up. Was Gavin Burris, delayed penalty coming. And a tripping penalty coming to the Whitmer Panthers with 11.05 to go here in this middle stanza. A tripping call. And the faceoff remains inside the Whitmer zone. One back to Burghardt. Far side point. Shot wide. Off the high glass. Burris, no worse for wear after that trip up. Lays it back into the corner for Lombardo. Cameron Lombardo can't contain as we approach the 10-minute mark here in this second period. McGurk intercepted away as that was Gignac who tried to clear. Held on inside the neutral zone. It's Burghardt. Rink wide. Nearly intercepted by the Trojans and finally held on by Lombardo as he'll work it back around the Dashers. Left wing side. Gavin Burris in the corner. Sends it ahead for Garrity a drive. High. That one missed just wide. Rebound back for Lombardo. Intercepted as there's a shot right on and held on. One oh three to go. And so with ten oh eight to go here in the second period. There's the shot right on, played again. Back to the point. There's a high shot. Head hunting out in front of the slot, knocked away. 50 seconds to go now on the Trojans' power play, brought to you by AccuTool. Here's Brady Smith with the puck down low, but we're going to get a penalty. And that'll even out any potential power play.
And that'll bring the face off all the way back inside the Trojans' end. Not exactly what head coach Rick Sabo wanted to see under that power play. Nonetheless, Trojan short handled, able to get that one all the way down. Freshman Cooper Sexton back in the box for the Trojans for hooking, and that took away any power play the Trojans were hoping to get out of that as the parade of freshmen continues into the box for the Trojans tonight. Four-on-four four hockey for another 15 seconds as Jack Crawford plays it deep inside his own zone and around the dashers on the far wing side. Eight seconds and counting on the penalty for the Panthers as they will have an abbreviated power play. And that one... will bring the face off all the way back inside the Whitmer zone as the icing call is still called because it is even strength hockey, at least for the next one second. One second remaining on the big board on the Whitmer penalty. And they will have an abbreviated power play. And the faceoff won by the Trojans. Played off the side of the cage. Rose played it away. Now here come the Panthers. Three out to center and three wide across the line. Drop pass, top of the slot. Give and go as that was fielding. Tripped up but no call. Played back by McGurk down low into the corner near side. Up, hit with a high stick but no call as that one will meander. It's all the way down inside Whitmer territory with eight minutes and 38 seconds and counting as they'll play it up the near wing. Pick back up by Kenny. He'll circle out from behind the net. Out of the trapezoid, now on this odd man rush up ice. Across the red stripe and now across the Trojans line in onside. Here's Kenny. Cuts through a backhander. Just knocked away at the last minute by Noah Carver as he'll center it wide. Knocked away by Lombardo down low. He'll play it ahead and he gets tripped up. And that one's going to be a big penalty. And Lombardo a little shaken up on that one. That was a knee-to-knee, -knee, it looked like, as referee Eric Schreiner with the call. Tripping is the penalty. And so that brings it back to even strength hockey for 22 seconds before the Trojans now will have a relatively abbreviated AccuTool power play. Eight minutes and counting now here in this middle period as we approach the midway point of this hockey game. 1-1 one, one tie up on the big board, hanging high above the ice here at Hobart Arena. As they'll play it back, here's Crawford, a shot, loose puck! Finally stopped up. And a good effort there by Jack Crawford. And the Trojans will now have an abbreviated power play for a minute 34. And the faceoff will remain inside the... And it's won again by the Trojans. Top of the slot. Loose puck knocked away. Finally sent back to the point. Held on by Berghardt as he'll throw it deep. Pick back up out in front before it squirts into the corner off the short glass to the point. Here's a shot from McGurk. Loose puck out in front. Knocked away! Just at the last second. Scooped up by the Trojans in the corner. It's tripped up. No call. Right back to Berghardt. Hit off a stick in front. Glove down by Cooper Sexton. No call. Play continues. Back to McGurk, but it hops over his stick. And the Trojans will regroup. Under a minute to go on the abbreviated power play for the Trojans as that one hops all the way down to Carver. Makes the play with his mitt as the Trojans on this breakout. Turned over now by Whitmer. Holding on to the puck momentarily before they're knocked off by Berghardt. Now three on two in the making across the line and onside. Throws on the brakes. Here's a shot. Played. Loose puck out in front. Knocked away at the last moment by Relford. 
as he was able to help out his goaltender just enough to get it back into the right wing corner. Played back to the point. Here's Berghardt to drive. He had Francis not on the doorstop trying to get a piece of it before it comes all the way back to the point. Centering feed. Rink wide. This one high fly ball to deep center field. Played back into the right wing corner. Hit off the puck trying to control. Now here come the Panthers back the other way. Side steps the hit is Relford as he drops it back to Gignac. The lone goal scorer so far in blue tonight. As Gignac's able to get that one all the way down. And now we'll get a stoppage with 6.05 to go. And it looks like the faceoff should stay inside the Trojan zone with six minutes and five seconds to go here in this second period. Even strength hockey here. As it's Cameron Lombardo's going to take the draw. He's got Paff on his wing. As Lombardo will strong arm it himself. Sends it ahead to Garrity. Garrity with one goal already tonight. High shot. Played by Rose. And he will hold on to it. And a little bit of rough stuff there after the whistle, but nothing of note. That got the student section in Section 27 a little excited, though. But alas, nothing major will come of it other than a face-off. This time on the glove side, a goaltender, Lucian Rose. And it's one back by the Trojans. Shot right on, hit in some paraphernalia down low. As now here comes a three-on-one the other way before it's intercepted by the Trojans. Fired all the way down. Rose will hold on to it. And the Panthers will elect to continue playing on the half boards on the near wing side. Playing it ahead. That was Wishnowitz trying to get it down low into the corner. Scooped up by Gignac. He's under pressure. Finally sends it all the way down. And icing is going to be the call. Five minutes and 20 seconds. Both clubs are going to get wholesale changes. And so that one, again, inside the Panther zone. Even strength hockey with five minutes and 20 seconds to go. Right back, top of the slot. Loose puck knocked away by Rose. Pad save. Back to the point on the left wing side. Hops over the stick. Trying to get a piece of it was Burkhardt. He's able to fire it in, and he takes a late hit. Delayed penalty coming. Has that one right back into the near side. Big open ice hit right there. Gets the crowd into it. As here come the Trojans the other way. Sexton across, in on side, down low into the corner. Loose puck out in front. Garrity shoots, he scores! <laughs> and just like the first Trojans goal, that one was a hard work and lunch pale goal. It's a two nothing, a two one Troy game, excuse me, with 437 now to go here in this second period. That got the crowd up on their feet for some Sunday night hockey. <laughs> Brady Smith getting credit for the goal. The large student section here will love that one as Francis Scott and Cooper Sexton getting credit for helpers on Brady Smith's goal to make this a 2-1 hockey game. Now approaching four minutes here in this second period. And that'll bring the faceoff all the way back inside the Whitmer zone. Four minutes and 11 seconds to go here in this second period. 
in to take the face off. As the Trojans win that back to McGurk. In between the circles, low shot, and that one held on. As Lucian Rose saw that low shot between the circles and was able to cover it up, closing up that five hole before Mike McGurk could do any serious damage. And so the faceoff now with four minutes and five seconds will remain inside the Whitmer zone. And the Trojans have last change as the home team, and so they're going to be ejected from the draw. And coming in to take the face off is Eric Kenny. As it's won by the Trojans, that one hit off the shin pad of Kenny. Big bounce out to center ice. Working for it was Gignac. He's in off sides, and so he'll tag up at the line. As that one played by Noah Carver in front of his own blue crease. Back from behind the net and around the dashers, but held on by the Panthers. Fired right back in. Carver the save. Rebound out from behind the net as Crawford wraps it around the Dashers. Three minutes and 40 seconds to go here. 2-1 hockey in favor of the Trojans. Back inside the Whitmer zone. On the half boards left wing side. Crawford comes in to make the play but can't contain. As here come the Panthers the other way. Gignac all alone. Breakaway. Under pressure he scores. And Gignac should pick up goal number two of his night to tie this hockey game at two apiece with three minutes and 21 seconds to go. And so just like that, we're back to even hockey. 2-2, two -two. three minutes and 17 seconds to go. We'll go downstairs for the official word from Roger Mumpower, but it was Gignac that got his second goal of the night. As they'll play it around the Dashers on the left wing side. Uh, Gignac gets the official credit as Matty Logan nearly had a one-timer on Rose. This would back out to neutral ice. And some fresh legs for both hockey clubs. 2.41 to go in a very entertaining second period along the great Miami River in downtown Troy, Ohio. If you're just joining us, I'm JT Zabo, and it is great to have you with us tonight for the final preseason exhibition game for the Trojans and the conclusion to a home-and-home -home series that has not disappointed for both hockey clubs. As the Panthers play down from behind their own net, Here's Lombardo, centering feed, and Francis not on the doorstop waiting. Couldn't get much going as they'll play it back to the point. Here's Berghardt, low on the ice, high shot, finally off the end boards. Rebound on the half boards, right wing side. Playing it was Matty Logan, trying to get a piece of it. Multi-sport varsity athlete, also a member of the tennis team, and a competitive championship figure skater is Logan. Knocks that one away, picked up by Lombardo. And Lombardo had some choice words for the referee who made that call. <clears throat> Nonetheless, the damage is done. Offsides against the Trojans with 153 to go. And the faceoff won by the Trojans, but picked back up. Here's Gignac, intercepted on that drop pass. Right back to the captain, Mike McGurk, who takes the hit, but is able to get the pass all the way around. Scooped up the wing. Pumped in. Rose is going to make the play, and he's going to hold on. <clears throat> and so with 1.35 to go here in this second period, Faceoff is going to stay inside the Whitmer zone. One back, tipped up with a high stick. That one is going to be up and out of play. And another souvenir puck brought to you by our good friends at Team Gear. 
the official souvenir supporter of Troy Trojans Varsity Hockey. As the faceoff in neutral ice. Held on to by the Trojans. That one hit up high off the cage. And now here comes Garrity. One goal already tonight. Hit that one right into some kind of unprotected area. He is down on the ice and hurt. That looked like his leg it caught. That was number six, Derek Bradley, as he limps off the ice. Play continues. And finally, the trainer, Justin Perkins, is going to sprint onto the ice surface as he took that shot point-blank range, and it looked like it got up under his paraphernalia and got him in an unprotected area, and he is going to head right off. Yeah, he's going to go straight down into the tunnel. That was number six, Derek Bradley. Medical room. Excellent facilities here at Hobart Arena, thanks to our wonderful medical staff presented by Premier Health. And the Upper Valley Medical Center, Center for Sports Medicine, Justin Perkins, Kira Dorney, head athletic trainer for all Troy Trojans Varsity Athletics as they'll work it around on the Nashers. Near side, scooped up by the Trojans. Now here's Brady Smith out to center and across. He'll pump it deep. Under a minute now to go. As they'll work it back down low. Sexton, try to control, couldn't in time. Three wide, now three on two for the Panthers across the line. Cutting into the slot, had his balance knocked away at the last moment as they'll play it out into the corner now for Sexton. In the corner, here's a shot, low, deflected in through the slot. That one back into the far corner, off the dashers and around again on the near side boards. Ten seconds in counting. As here come the Trojans, one final shot. And at the end of two periods, we have a 2-2 tie between the Troy Trojans. And the Whitmer Panthers, a very exciting first two periods of action here from the Historic Hobart Arena in downtown Troy. Glad to have everybody along for the ride tonight here on the Troy Trojans Hockey Network, brought to you by Team Gear. And we'd like to thank our sponsors tonight. Team Gear, the official spirit store of Troy Trojans Hockey. Also, like to thank... Kev's See-Through Window Cleaning. Visit them online at Kev's See-Through Window Cleaning.com. Also like to thank Irwin, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram in Troy. Exit 69, where they've been in Troy for over 40 years. Also like to thank Dr. Grabman, Comprehensive Dentistry of Troy on North Market Street. Also presented by Harlow Builders, Troy Speech Therapy. Lightner and Stickles CPA, RMT, Rosewood Machine and Tool. Visit them online at rosewoodmachine.com. Also like to thank Bruns General Contracting, Dungan and Lefevre Legal Professional Association on the Square in Troy. Also like to thank AccuTool, Precision Machining, the official power play supporter of Troy Trojans Hockey. Carl Mick Plumbing. Visit them online or call 875-0098. Also like to thank Canine Creations, a sponsor of Troy Trojans Hockey for nearly 10 years. Like to thank Excellence in Dentistry. Visit them online at dentistintroyohio.com. Also like to thank Minster Bank. Clopay, the official garage door manufacturer of Troy Trojans Hockey. And like to thank First Title as part of the Troy Trojans Hockey Network presented by Team Gear. When we come back, we will have third period action from the historic Hobart Arena in downtown Troy, Ohio. Stay right here. This is Troy Trojans Varsity Hockey on Facebook. <laughs> We got three prices we're going to give away tonight. I understand. 
Three great prizes. Whoever gets the first one has their choice of the prize. We've got another meeting down here. If you're waiting back here over here, if you want to come down to this one over here, you can throw some up over there. Toss one out here. Any more? Anybody else? Or we can we can get we can get first question. I think this is what the topic right here. Right here. So, this one, right here, here it up. Number 12. Right, number 12. Uh oh. Yeah. Any more, any more over there? Is that it? So I picked this one up and I think it was a little closer. So number 12, you're still the winner. And another winner is number 97. And then, I'm going to say that this one right here is closer. And we got four prizes. Only three. Okay, I'm going to say 95 and then 52. Okay, what do you want to have? We're going to be in the number 12, number 1, 97, 95, and 30. And then an alternate in between. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's meeting is broadcasting live on Facebook. It will be available for on-demand viewing on YouTube starting tomorrow. To reach the voice of the church, you can check out now at facebook.com slash Troy Hunter. return home to Homer meeting next Sunday, November 21st, and they host the working in the Joe Bar Five forty-five. Free admission for the whole family next 
And welcome back inside the historic Hobart Arena in downtown Troy, Ohio. I'm JT Zabo. As we get set for period number three, it is a tied-up hockey game, two apiece. As we welcome you back along the banks of the Great Miami River to the historic Hobart Arena, we have been in for quite the treat. The first two hockey periods, a very even back-to-back -back tempo. And that match by the score upon the big board hanging above center ice. As the Trojans in her home white uniforms again going from right to left on your screen. It'll be Gavin Burris to take the draw. And we're underway here for period number three in this 2-2 hockey game. The final preseason exhibition game for the Trojans as the Panthers are shot high. Off the high glass and around the Dashers. Picked up by Berghart. Takes a shot up high. Play continues on the half boards right wing side. Scooped up by Gavin Burris as Hill wisely skated around behind the net or pumping it up the wall. Bouncing puck on the half boards. Can't clear. Finally does as Garrity. Stretch pass ahead for Lombardo. Not in time. Here's the other way. Picked up by Gignac now for the Panthers. Deep inside the Trojans end is an icing. Or shall it be a penalty, I believe, from way behind the play? It was way over here, and it was the referee and it was the referee Eric Schreiner that had his hand up from way behind that caught this one, and indeed it is gonna be a roughing penalty for the Trojans against Gavin Burris. 14.20 to go here in the second period, and the Trojans once again on the Clope penalty kill. Brought to you by Clope, the official garage door provider of Troy Trojans hockey. And so the power play continues for the Panthers, but shorthanded, here's Smith the other way, a shot, played loose puck, knocked away by the defense. Right back to the point, there's a shot, high glass, wide. Jack Crawford blows a tire coming onto the ice after his line change but play continues as now here come the Panthers escaping a potential dangerous situation in front of their own goaltender now inside Trojan territory having his pocket picked Smith tried to clear that one played by Carver wide around now to the half boards and back inside Trojan territory out from behind the net the Panthers will get a line change now and the Trojans will ice this one 185 feet the other direction. 13-29 and counting here in this final period of regulation as they'll move it ahead. Panthers out to center ice. Two wide across the line. Walking in was Gignac under pressure. He shoots just wide off that backhander into the far corner. Had a tail anchor on him the whole time, but he was able to get the shot off as play continues with a bouncing puck out in front of the slot. That one fired around the Dashers, and now on the far side as Crawford gives chase. Right back to Sexton as he blows a tire. Right back on the point, but play continues as that shot gobbled up into Cooper Sexton. And finally out as he's able to force that one out to center ice. 28 seconds and counting on that penalty to Gavin Burris in the Whitmer power play to start this third period in a 2-2 hockey game at this point. Play again. Quinn Garrity trying to keep it inside the zone and cannot. Crawford off the boards is able to slap that one all the way down at the tail end of his shift. Six seconds and counting on that penalty to Burris, and the Trojans have killed this one off once again. Even strength hockey. Right back. Lombardo couldn't pick it up. Finally picks up the trash down low. Through the slot, centering feed. Burris had it, but he will... Have it stripped away. And he had the right idea. Goaltender came way out of the crease as Lucian Rose was able to make a diving save to keep this a tied hockey game with 12.07 to go here in this third period. Right off the draw, this one picked up by the Panthers in the corner on the far wing. 
Played it ahead. As he'll step across the line, here's a high shot back into the far corner, chipped away. Playing it back around with Sexton, hit with a high stick. Play continues. As it's deep inside the zone, offsides against the Trojans as Francis not not able to tag up. And offsides is the call as the referee, Eric Schreiner, having an intimate chat with freshman Brady Smith. Looking on with eager amusement, head coach Rick Zabo. Nonetheless, play continues. No one's worse for wear. After a little freshman roundup from the officials. Play continues. Bouncing puck off a shoulder scooped up by Carver. Played right back to Cooper Sexton on the half boards left wing side. Takes the hit into the dashers and makes the play as he tries to get it ahead. Coming back was Smith, who's able to backhand it inside the Whitmer zone under pressure from Francis Knott. Wrapped it back around on the far side as Whitmer tried to control. Relford is able to clear momentarily before it's picked back up. By McGurk at his own blue line. Forced it ahead. Was Francis Knott. Gets it back down for Gavin Burris. Half board, centering pass. Back for Crawford. Low shot. Off the bum of Ian Francis not. Play continues on that point left wing side. Trojans can't contain, and so they're forced to play Pong through neutral ice before it strips back away. Fresh legs out for the Panthers. Stood up at the point. Here's a long stretch pass for Lombardo. No icing called. He's going to race for it and gets there first. Wrap around out in front. Scores! Once again with 10.24, to, once again with 10.24 to go in the third. The Trojans retake the lead, 3-2. to two. We'll go downstairs for the official word from Roger Mumpower. Garrity gets his second goal of the night to make this a 3-2 hockey game. And so the faceoff remain inside the Whitmer zone. And it'll be Brady Smith to take the draw. As it's outlet back to the Panthers inside Trojan territory. And offside is going to be the call. And so just like that, we'll have the face on back in the neutral zone. One by the Trojans, out ahead now for Sexton on the far side. It's able to chip it off the Dashers and ahead. Played off the boards down low out from behind the net, and they're going to call that one a high stick. And I believe they're going to keep the face off inside the visitor's end, as they say that was a high stick off of the Whitmer Panthers. As play continues. Back into the corner. Big hit there by Smith. Knocks the puck away. Francis Nod is there to help out as well. As they'll battle along the dashers. Finally squirts out of the kick plate. Here's a centering feed. Picked back up by the Panthers as they'll knock it away back on the far side boards. Played up the wall. At the point. Kicked away by McGurk at the last second. But he's forced to turn that away in front of the benches. And... Good defensive-minded strategy right there to see that at the tail end of a shift. As giving chase down low into the corner with the Trojans. Whitmer, centering feet out through center ice and nearly sidestepped a big slew foot. No call, and finally, 
That's going to be an offside. To stop the clock now with just under nine minutes to go here in this third period. Eight minutes and 58 seconds to go exact. It is a 3-2 Trojan lead. Shots on goal to this point listed as 18-8 in favor of the Trojans. And again, if you're just joining us or watching us on demand on Facebook or YouTube, it is a 3-2 Troy lead after what has been a very end-to-end -end and exciting hockey game to conclude the preseason schedule for the Trojans against this very tough Toledo Whitmer Hockey Club. So moving ahead. Here's Burris, steps off sides. And so with eight minutes and 43 seconds to go, faceoff will stay inside the neutral zone. And it'll be Gavin Burris to take the draw. As it's one back. Through center ice, Matty Logan. Played it ahead. This one's going to be scooped back up by Burris. He's got Paff on his wing. Burris, top of the circle, has his pocket picked away, and that one regrouped back out through center ice as the Trojans will tag up and bring that back inside the zone. Eight minutes and 20 seconds now to go here in regulation. 3-2, Troy in the lead. As that one is going to be offsides, and offsides is the call. Now 8-10 to go here in the third. And again, it'll be Smith to take the face off directly in front of head coach Rick Zabo's bench. And right back to Crawford. Wraps it around. And here come the Trojans the other way. Smith sidestepping a hit. He's going to work it into the near side corner all by himself before this one cleared her way. And again, out to the point, held on by Crawford. Big hit at open ice. Clean legal hit right there. As that gave Whitmer a little bit of life. Here's a shot right on Carver, turned aside. As the Trojans getting caught with one there. Forced that one back inside the Whitmer zone. Scooped up by Gignac. He's got two goals already tonight, picking up both lamp lighters for his team. 7-20 and counting here in the third, though. It is a Troy 3-2 lead. Right back. Off of some shin pads down low. The bouncing puck right back to the near side point. McGurk couldn't hold on to it. And the faceoff comes. Excuse me. The puck comes all the way back. No icing. As in to help, a big hit there was Cooper Sexton. But couldn't hold on to the puck as here comes Whitmer back the other way. With a head of steam is Relford. Cross the line, he'll work it into the corner. Tries a wrap around. Carver saves, and he will hold on to that one. And that will stop the clock. Now with 6 minutes and 45 seconds to go. Six minutes and 45 seconds to go. As the faceoff will be taken by Gavin Burris. And it's one cleanly back by the Trojans. As Burgard's able to fire that one all the way down. That's going to make it down to Rose, who plays it in front of his crease, drops it back into the corner. And the Trojans regroup. Here's Gavin Burris reaching for it down low in the corner. Loose puck held on to by Rose. And he is rightly going to hold on to it. Now with 6 minutes and 21 seconds here. A little choppy start and stop here in the tail end of this third period. But it's one back by Gur Burris. A shot right on. And he will hold on to it. Or will he? Is a, We may have a penalty here. And it's going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. 
to Cameron Lombardo. And so the Trojans are going to be shorthanded. An unsportsmanlike conduct penalty after the whistle against Cameron Lombardo. Not what head coach Rick Tabo wanted to see in a tough one-goal hockey game, preseason or not. And so play continues. Another opportunity opens up for Whitmer. Five minutes and 55 seconds in counting here in regulation. Delayed penalty coming. And so just like that. And so that looks like it's going to be a boarding penalty against Whitmer's number nine, Jake Gignac. And that will move the faceoff all the way back inside the zone. It will negate that unsportsmanlike conduct penalty to Cameron Lombardo. Trojans getting lucky on that one. And indeed, it's going to be a five-minute major. A five-minute major penalty will take Whitmer's leading scorer out of the game, essentially, for the rest of regulation. And so the hockey god smiling on the Trojans for that gift. As here they come the other way, one-on-one -on -one across the line. As Bernhardt will fire that one around the Dashers. Got poked off the puck. A five-minute major for boarding will give the Trojans an elongated power play. And so the faceoff comes back inside the Whitmer zone. One minute remaining on that unsportsmanlike conduct penalty for Lombardo. Four minutes and 29 seconds to go. As coming out of the net was Rose. And the players come together at the end of the whistle, but nothing comes of it. As Rose came out to make a mitt save. 5-12 to go here in regulation. One goal hockey game. And so play continues back into the far wing corner. Under pressure from Sexton, here come the Panthers back the other way, too wide across the line. Here's a shot as Noah Carver got a brief glimpse of it with a glove. Not enough, though, as play continues back out to center ice. Even strength hockey for another 32 seconds before the Trojans then will have a power play for nearly the remainder of regulation thanks to that five-minute major to Gignac. Bouncing puck off the boards. Right wing side, 20 seconds left on that unsportsmanlike call to Lombardo. Uh, stepping across. Ralford a shot, stopped. As that one makes it all the way down. And so they're going to call it icing, still with eight seconds to go on the Trojans penalty. Four minutes and 24 seconds on the clock where it counts. And so play continues. Back to the Trojans. Here's Garrity. He's got Burris on his wing. Fires that one wide. Trojans now on the power play as Rose comes way out of the net. And so the Trojans now on the power play for another 3 minutes and 23 seconds. One cleanly back at the point. Here's a redirection. Loose puck paddling through. Shoots and scores!
And so just like that, a power play goal brought to you by AccuTool makes this a 4-2 to two hockey game. As Gavin Burse skates it inside the zone. Trojan still on the AccuTool power play. Another power play goal makes this 5-2 to two with 3 minutes and 51 seconds. And so it's a 5-2 hockey game just like that. Garrity gets the hat trick. Quinn Garrity picking up the hat trick in this 5-2 hockey game. Still 3 minutes and 25 seconds to go in regulation. As Lombardo mixing it up a little bit with Kenny there behind the play. As icing is going to be the call. Still two minutes and 27 seconds on that penalty. That five-minute major for boarding that was given to Jake Gignac. That really, and you really hate to see a hockey game like this be decided in such a fashion, but that really was a turning point in this hockey game was that five-minute major because those power play goals scored on it made the difference in this hockey game. And you can just see Gignac sitting in the penalty box helpless and you certainly feel for him in his hockey club, as this has been nothing short of a very entertaining high school hockey game tonight. Play continues under three minutes now to go in regulation. Is a big open ice check knocked away. Kenny was gunning for his number 11 counterpart, Colin Berghart, as he'll hold on to the puck and knock that away at the last minute. Physicality certainly increasing with the frustration as that backhander turned aside by Noah Carver. Blake continues. Here's a long stretch pass. Intended. That time for Francis Knott. Couldn't get much on it. As here comes Kenny the other way. A shot. He scores. And that cuts the Trojans' lead down to two. And so now a 5-3 to three hockey game. The Panthers are not going back to Toledo quietly tonight. And rightfully so after the hockey game we have seen tonight. One minute and 20 seconds to go on that penalty for boarding to Gignac and the Trojans' AccuTool power play that stemmed from that five-minute boarding call. One minute and 57 seconds to go here in regulation. 5-3, to three, the Trojans in the lead. As the Panthers work it out of their own zone. Played by Lombardo. Fanned on the pass, but Crawford's able to make the shot in wide net. Back into the far side. Drops it back around. Still trying to play it ahead. Loose puck back to the point. For Lombardo, a shot. Save. Scores! And the deficit right back up to three. Another AccuTool power play goal. This time scored by number 15, Cameron Lombardo. And so his play continues. Six to three, the score, under 90 seconds to go here in regulation. 30 seconds remaining on that penalty to Gignac as (laughs) 
And so the faceoff will stay inside the Trojan zone. Licked up by the Trojans. The captain, Mike McGurk, sends it ahead for the freshman. Brady Smith, a big bouncing puck off the end boards. Nearly made it into the back of the net. Goaltender was there in time. Ten seconds to go on that penalty to Gignac. And so with 56.1 seconds... Faceoff will come all the way back inside the Trojans' end to be taken on the glove side of starting netminder Noah Carver. And so it's won back by the Trojans. Out comes Lombardo with it. Holding on to it. Play continues. Garrity all by himself. Shoots! And had a big save right there by Lucian Rose. And so the faceoff should stay inside the Whitmer zone with 44.2 seconds to go. And so off this clean draw, nearly intercepted. By the Panthers, good effort there by Gignac. You could tell he was chomping at the bit to get back on the ice as we return to full strength for the final 30 seconds of regulation, 30 seconds in counting. A late hit uncalled will give Gignac an opportunity out through center ice. Laid back into the corner. Out through center ice. 16 seconds in counting. Here's Lombardo. Takes a big hit there and is knocked off the puck. Whitmer crowd enjoys that one as Berghardt takes the hit as well. And finally, an offsides call. He's going to knock that one away. Yeah. And so the faceoff will stay inside the neutral zone. And is won back by the visitors, and that's it. And so after three exciting periods of regulation, it is a final score tonight from the historic Hobart Arena in downtown Troy. The Troy Trojans victorious, sweeping the Whitmer Panthers in two games here to end the preseason schedule. Your final score tonight, 6-3. to three. I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in tonight on the Troy Trojans Hockey Network presented by Team Gear. And I'd like to thank all of our sponsors tonight as well. Kev See-Through Window Cleaning, Irwin, Comprehensive Dentistry of Troy, RMT, Leitner and Stickle CPA, Harlow Builders, Troy Speech Therapy, Bruns Builders, Dugan and Lefevre, AccuTool, Carl McPlumbing, Canine Creations, Excellence in Dentistry, Minster Bank, Clope, and First Title. And we'd like to thank you for tuning in tonight on Facebook and on demand on YouTube on the Troy Trojans Hockey Network presented by Team Gear. For our entire crew, for Riley, Lily, John Wyatt, Rhino, and Dorothy listening back in Hamilton tonight, I'm JT Zabo, your Trojans Victorious at home, 6-2-3. Good night, everybody.